We mentioned earlier about derived units. Let's talk about this in further detail. The SI unit for speed is meters per second. This is an example of an SI derived unit created by combining SI base units. Remember, we have seven base units. Everything else is a derived unit. So we've taken the units of distance and time and made a new derived unit of speed in the form of meters per second. Same thing can happen with volume. Volume is defined as the length cubed and has the SI derived units of cubic meters. Meters times meters times meters, meters cubed. In other words, length times height times width gives you volume. Traditionally, chemists tend to use the term of the liter for the unit of volume, which is equal to one cubic dec decimeter. Here are some conversions you should understand and learn to be able to use to convert from one unit of volume to another. One liter is equal to one decimeter cubed. A thousand liters is equal to one meter cubed. One milliliter is equal to one centimeter cubed. And a thousand milliliters is equal to one liter. Now, these given to you, the more important ones to you are on the right side here. One milliliter to one centimeter cubed is something you should memorize, as well as 1,000 milliliters is equal to one liter, which you should already know based on the prefix system. Uh, on the left side, an important one to remember is 1,000 liters is equal to 1 meters cubed. That would help you with one homework set, okay? Other than that, not important. The real important ones are on the right side. Another important derived unit is density. The density of an object is its mass per unit volume. In other words, D is equal to M over V. Density is a physical property of the substance. It doesn't matter the quantity of the substance. The mass and volume can vary. However, that ratio of mass to volume, that ratio of mass to volume will always be constant for a substance. So that substance will always have the same density. Mass can change, the volume can change, but that ratio will always be equal to that density of that object. where D is density, M is for mass, and V is for volume. You can easily measure the volume of a solid. If you take a graduated cylinder or some volume of water and you measure it and you put that solid in, the level that water changes is the, is the volume of that substance. And then you can get the mass on the scale and you can easily determine the density of some substance. Generally, the unit of mass is the gram. And the unit for volume varies depending on the physical state of the substance. Liquids, we tend to use milliliters. For solids, we tend to use centimeters cubed. And for gases, we tend to use li uh, liters. Another term that's important is specific gravity of substance. This is unitless. It has no units. However, you can go from that easily to the density of a substance because it's the ratio of that density to the substance to the density of water at some particular temperature. The one that we tend to use is the uh, temperature of the density of water at 25 degrees C is water at 1 gram per milliliter. Well, naturally, if I'm dividing by 1, it, that basically tells me the specific gravity of substance is equal to the density of that substance, grams per milliliter. Let's look at an example. A sample of mineral galena, lead sulfide, weighs 12.5. 4 grams and has a volume of 1.64 centimeters cubed. Since this is centimeters cubed, that's an indication to me that this is a solid, since we're using those units. We want to know what is the density of galena. Well, we have to build the formula, which is density is equal to mass over volume. So this is just plugging and chugging into the formula. We know that mass is 12.4 grams. The volume is 1.64 centimeters cubed. Multiply that out, we get 7.5609 grams per centimeter cubed. Correct sig figs. It's a multiple, it's a division, and the both of them had three sig figs. So for my final answer should have three fig, sig figs, which is 7.56 grams per centimeter cube. Now you can write it that way, or another way you can write it is 7.56 grams per centimeters cube.
Here's another example. Ethanol has a density of 0.789 grams per milliliter. What volume of ethanol must be poured into a graduated cylinder to equal 30.3 grams? Well, here we can use the formula and directly fit calculate our answer, or just follow in units we can figure out the answer, which we talk more about at the end of this slide. First, we must convert the density formula to solve for volume if we're going to start off with the formula. We know that density is equal to mass over volume. We need to be able to do a little bit of arithmetic to solve for our variable of volume in this case. Well, what we're going to do is multiply both sides by volume to get rid of the volume in the denominator of the mass. And then eventually we want to get the volume by itself. So I'll multiply by volume on both sides. My volumes cancel, which now leads me to formula volume time density gives me mass. Well, I need to do another conversion, another arithmetic step here. I need to now divide by the density on both sides to get rid of the D and leave the V, my volume, by itself. So I'll multiply both sides by 1 over D, which doesn't change anything because I'm doing the same thing to both sides. My D's cancel, which leaves me volume is equal to mass over density, which is the formula that we'll plug into to get our answer. So I have Volume is equal to mass over density, which is mass is 30.3 grams over 0.789 grams per milliliter. Uh, if I want to rearrange this slightly and change that milliliter, which is the denominator of denominator, really it's in the numerator, I could write it this way. And say 30.3 grams times my 0.789 uh, grams per milliliter. I can see that my grams cancel, leaving me in milliliters, which is what I want which tells me it's 38.4 milliliters. This is just using the formula, but once you get in the habit of thinking about doing things in terms of dimensional analysis of canceling units, so we can do this another way just as well. Another way to do this is to follow units and use the factor that density is a conversion factor, just like one foot is equal to 12 inches. It's the same thing. We're saying that so much mass is equal to so much milliliters. Um, so density is a conversion factor with the components basically equal to 1. We are converting grams to a volume term through using density as a conversion factor. We have to think about this in terms of, okay, I have 0.789 grams of my ethanol per every milliliter of ethanol. Well, we're saying if I have 0.789 grams of methanol, I have 1 milliliter of meth uh, ethanol. Okay, so in essence... We can use this either way. We can say, okay, if I had one milliliter of ethanol, I got 0 0.789 grams of methanol, because this is all equal to one. Okay, it's a conversion factor. If I had the mass, that mass, then I had that volume. So all I have to do now is say, okay, I'm going to take my 30.3 grams, and what I want to do is convert that to volume by using this conversion factor of density. I just got to pick the right one to get my units to cancel. I want that grams of my numerator of my 30.3 to, to cancel out with grams of my denominator of my conversion factor, which means I'm going to take this one, because all I'm doing is multiplying by 1, because it's equivalent to 1, and just changing it to a different unit, and plug that in to get my grams to cancel. So that's why I'm going to place it this way. So then what happens is my grams cancel, I do my 30.3 divided by my 0.789, and I get my milliliters, 38.4 milliliters, same way we did with the formula. But this is a little better way of doing it because we got lots of different width calculations we're going to do like this as we go on in the semester. Homework 7 should be done doing some density calculations.